fellow Gecko and Reptile fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko. You know the benefits of a misting system, so why haven't you installed one yet? Well, is it because of cost? Is it because of time? Is it because it's just so complex? Well, today we're going to talk about misting systems. I'm going to share with you how to save hundreds of dollars, how to only use a few tools from your toolbox, and also how to save tons and tons of time in putting this together. Join me today. As you probably already know, I have hundreds and hundreds of gecko enclosures already set up. Well, over the last couple of years, I've set up two additional misting systems to control about 30 to 40 tanks. And that has worked out so well for me I can't imagine not having these misting systems. But the benefit isn't just saving time. It's also helping me not try to remember to go downstairs and miss the geckos. And as you know, that's a huge, huge benefit to the animals. But it's also a huge benefit to the plants as well. But you're saying there's huge costs too. Well, the cost of the equipment alone, the complexity of setting up a misting system, and trying to remember to fill that reservoir bucket. We're going to talk about all three of those issues and we're going to resolve those problems today. So do you have a misting system today? Comment down below and let me know what type of system that you're using. If you don't have a misting system, let me know the reason why you haven't installed one so far. So let's talk about the preparation for a misting system. But before we do, make sure you hit that like if you like this video, subscribe to this channel and hit that notification all so you don't miss these types of videos in the future. Now, before we talk about the details of setting up a misting system, here are some things to consider. Number one, how many tanks do you have? If you have one or two tanks, maybe this isn't a big deal for you. If you have more than a couple of tanks, a misting system is going to help you. So take a look at your setup. Where is the pump going to go? Make sure that you have a place for the reservoir, the five gallon, we use a five gallon bucket. Do you have room for a bucket and a pump? How about electricity? Do you have an electrical source somewhere close by your tanks? And finally, how close are your enclosures to each other? If you have one upstairs, one downstairs, this might not be the best method for you. If they're all within about 20, 25 feet of each other, this will work perfectly well. And now is the fun part. Remember how I said that I would save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars? Here's where I'm going to do that. Now, you can go out and get a kit already assembled for about $500 to handle 15 enclosures we're going to find something that will work for you for about 230 bucks. That's right, $230. Now, if you only have a few tanks, this could be far less than that even. Now, I have some homework for you. Grab a piece of paper and a pencil, go to your first tank, and measure the distance from your first tank all the way to your last tank. Is that 5 feet? Is that 10 feet? For us, we're putting in three rows of five tanks each, for 15 enclosures. So I know each row is about five feet, so I have three rows, so that's 15 feet. And then I add two two-foot runs for each end. So now I'm up to about 20 feet that I need to set up this whole system just for the tanks alone. And we'll come back to that number in just a bit. So let's go shopping. Now I started my journey on Amazon, one of my favorite websites. But let me say beforehand that you could probably shop around some of these parts and find a little bit of a better deal. Save a dollar here, save a dollar there. But most of these bigger pieces you want to go to Amazon. And I've got the links actually in the descriptions. So let's go ahead and talk about the pump. This pump is the Accutech 8800 and it does come with the transformer. It's a big pump, it's fairly quiet, and most important of all, it has 80 PSI. That's enough to drive easily my 15 tanks. This pump comes in at $135, and I know that that sounds like a lot, but this is going to be the backbone of your whole system, and it's important to get a really good pump right out of the gates. The next item we get to shop for is a timer, and here's the key with shopping for a timer. Make sure that you find one with at least the seconds to be programmable for your timing. Why is that important? Because you don't want your misting system to have to run for a whole minute if you don't want to. The timer that we're looking at here does have the programmable down to the seconds. It's $18 and this will work perfectly well for you. Again, you can find the link to Amazon down in the description. 
For the reservoir, we use a five gallon bucket. Head on over to your home improvement store, grab one for about five bucks. Because this pump has a 3 8 inlet and outlet, you'll need 3 8 tubing. You can get five feet or so for about five bucks at any home improvement store. Your water is going to be supplied by quarter inch tubing. Now I found a roll of 25 foot for 10 bucks on Amazon, but afterwards I found it for $5 at one of the home improvement stores. So I'm gonna put $5 on the sheet here. Again, because your pump is 3 8 inlet and outlet and all the other tubing is quarter inch, you'll need two reducers, 3 8 to uh, quarter inch reducers, one going from the bucket to the pump and one from the pump to the main uh, water supply. You'll need a bulkhead connection going from your bucket to the quarter inch tubing and I found a pack of 10 for about $8. I'm sure again, if you went to a home improvement store, you could find one for two bucks. You only need one. So those are all the parts that you absolutely need if you have two tanks or you have, if you have 15 or 20 tanks. Let's talk about how much you're going to spend per tank in addition to that. So far we're at $185, that's not too bad. Here's where it gets tricky. You can go out and get the brand name nozzles for about $15 a piece. I thought that was a little expensive. I went to Amazon. I found these nozzles, six in a pack for 15 bucks. Since I have 15 enclosures, I needed three packs of these for $45. If you have six or less enclosures, you only need one of these packs. You're only paying the $15. For the total system, if you have under six tanks, six or under tanks, you're paying under $200. Now for my system of 15 tanks, I'm up to $230. That's not bad compared to the kit price of almost 400 bucks. So if I get out my calculator, that's less than half price that you're paying for assembling the kit yourself. And again, all the parts are down in the description below rather than paying the $500 for the kit. Now earlier, I said this was going to be easy, so let's talk about tools. The only tools that you're going to need here is a pair of pliers, a box cutter, a drill, a drill bit, you might need some plumber's tape, and you might need some silicone. And I'll talk about that mistake in a little bit. Now we know that the pump is a key part of this whole system. The nozzles are very, very important as well. Let's take a look at these nozzles. Make sure that you get them so that they turn all the way around because there might be some of your enclosures that you want the misting to come to the front, some that you want it to go more in the back, some that you want to go to the right side, some that you want to go to the left. For me, they vary for, from enclosure to enclosure. So it's so, so important to have them adjustable. And you can see how adjustable this one really is. Now I said installing the system is going to be easy. We talked about the tools, super easy no complicated tools. Let's talk about the steps because this is so easy. It's incredible. Step number one is the setup. You wanna make sure that you're hooking up your pump to a good grounded outlet. Now here, Nanette and I are running a cord from our main outlet on another system over to this pump. I really, really can't stress this enough. Safety first on this. Next, we're looking for a place to put our pump and for us, it worked perfect in the closet just behind our Exoterra rack. We have a very, very solid shelf. We'll actually be putting a piece of foam under our pump once we're complete with the setup so that it reduces some of the sound. Next, we hook up the transformer to the pump and we're all set with the setup. Step number two, the bucket. At this point, you need a small hole drilled in the bucket. Make sure you go really slow because the bucket is thin, thin and it's going to go through super quick. Once we have the hole drilled in the bucket, then we put on the plumber's tape to help seal that hole. Absolutely make sure that you test this bucket to make sure that it doesn't leak just in case. You don't want to put the bucket in place, hook up your uh, full run of line, and then turn everything on and see the hole in your bucket where the bulkhead is drip and drip and drip. Now, don't tell anyone, but when we first tested our bucket, we did have a very, very slow, small drip. So I dried everything off, put a dab of silicone on the inside and the outside, and that held perfectly. Let's go ahead and cut off a small piece of the larger hose, the 3 8 You only need about six to eight inches. We'll put that in into the pump, 
and then we'll connect the smaller hose to this larger hose. Let's go ahead and put in that quarter inch into the bucket, into the bulkhead on the bucket, and it goes in easy. You push it in, you don't have to do any tricks, and then to pull it out, if you ever need to pull it out of one of these push connections, you just push in the pin and pull out the hose. It's that easy. Let's go ahead and connect the quarter inch to the 3 8 inch with that reducing connection piece. And again, this is easy. You just push in both tubing pieces into this connection. We're almost done with this bucket step, but don't forget, you need to add water. We use distilled water because we want to reduce the spotting on the glass of the enclosures. And number two, it helps save the life of those nozzles so it doesn't the nozzles don't plug up as easily. Step number three is hooking up the enclosures. The very first thing that we do is measure the runs from the pump to the first tank, from the first tank all the way to the end. We cut off each piece as we need it from one tank to the next tank to the next tank. So now we have all of our pieces of the quarter inch tubing all set. And if you have rows on a stand like this, you absolutely have to make sure that you go from one row to the next row. Make sure that you measure off that tubing and have it available. This is a pretty key step in the whole process because you want to measure off all of these pieces to about the measurement that you need. It doesn't have to be exact. You can be a little bit longer. Like if we have a connection from one tank to the next that's 12 inches, we'll use 13 to give it a little bit of a give so that we can adjust that, that length a little bit. But you certainly don't want to cut them down to 12 inches or 11, and you certainly don't want to go 16 or 18 inches because that would just use up too much tubing. Like my father told me years and years and years ago, measure twice, cut once. Now we come to the part that everybody dreads. Oh my gosh, I don't want to cut the holes in the tops of these enclosures. It's not going to be that hard. In fact, Nanette pointed out after we were done with all 15 of these enclosures that it took far, far less time than she had imagined it would take. I would say by the time we were done with the 15th enclosure, we had all the holes cut and the pieces in the nozzles probably less than a half of an hour. These exoteros have metal tops and you want a little tiny hole, a quarter inch hole in each one of these. And that quarter inch doesn't have to be exact. You just don't want to make it too big or else you might have some animals, small animals, get out of those holes and especially insects like crickets. There's a lot of options you have here to cut those holes. I put this out on Facebook and I got lots and lots of different ideas, lots of great ideas. One of my favorites was just poke a hole through the screen top with a pencil. I really like that. But the option that we took to make it really simple for us, and it really was, was to take a box cutter and just poke a hole and then turn it a little bit so that that hole widened in the screen. Once you do one hole, you'll have the feel for doing all the other holes that you'll need to do. Again, this is the longest step in the whole process, but it's really, really not that bad. These nozzles will separate out the lower piece that will hang under the screen top and the top piece that will connect to the tubing will separate out. So you want to take them apart and then poke them through the hole, keeping the bottom piece on the bottom, of course, and the top on the top, and then click them in place. They'll push firmly into place and you'll be set with these tops. Go ahead and do that for each tank that you have. Next, take your quarter inch tubing that you have and connect from one tank to the next tank to the next tank and all the way down. Again, if you have multiple rolls, rows, you'll have to connect that last one all the way down to the first one on the next row. Now remember, you have to push that tubing all the way into each one of these nozzles as hard as you can. When you come to that last enclosure in your run, make sure you put a stopper in that nozzle. That's a pretty important step because if you forget that one, the water's just going to run all the way through the system and out on that last tank. The 3 8 tubing will go into the outlet of your pump. Make sure you don't put it on the inlet. Not that anybody would make that mistake. Add in your reducing connection to the 3 8 Add in your first line from your first tank into the quarter inch reducing connection piece. That's it. You're all set to run this thing. Well, almost all set. Step number five is doing a test run of your whole connection. So what I want you to do is every single connection where the lines connect to something, go ahead and take the lines and push them in firmly into each connection 
make sure each one is pushed in as far as it possibly can from the bucket to the pump from the pump over to the first tank and every single tank in your run next go into each enclosure and take the nozzle and make sure it's pointed in the direction that you want that nozzle to mist out in okay are you ready let's go ahead and plug that pump in now when we did our run of 15 tanks we had one drip one part where i didn't have the connection all the way through so i went back in i turned on the pump real quick and it's always best if you could have two people watching this one person plugging it in and one person watching every single tank to make it so that you're not spraying all over the place are we done yeah not quite yet step number six is setting up your timer you don't want this misting system to run all the time so you need to set up a timer so that it goes on at a specific time and goes off at a specific time that's where i've mentioned the seconds are very important in the programmable timer these timers are really cool because you can set them up to run at different times on different days however you want to set this up you can set up these timers individual days individual hours they're so neat so first set the time because you want an accurate time number two go ahead and set your times that you want the misting to go on and then the misting to go off and here's a huge huge suggestion make sure that you set the timer the very first times that you use it the first couple of times that you use it set it for 10 seconds it'll go on maybe it mists too much and you want to reduce the time maybe it doesn't mist enough and you can add time to that time for the uh, programming here's another key point the very first time this goes off absolutely make sure that you're there to watch it and you're saying what could possibly go wrong with this timer well, remember, most timers have an AM and a PM. If you set it to 8 o'clock AM and then 8 o'clock 10 seconds PM, you're going to have some pretty big problems the first time it goes off. Step number seven, setting up a reminder to fill that bucket. Set up a reminder for yourself so that you're notified to go back to that reservoir and fill up that bucket. I set up these 15 exoteros, 12 by 12 by 18 exoteros last summer. I had a blast doing it. I'm going to show the video somewhere up here. Go ahead and take a look at that. If you want to put together a bioactive enclosure, hopefully this video will help you to set it up the right way and the easy way. I hope this video helps. Leave a comment down below. Again, hit that like button if you like this video. Thank you everyone for watching.